My approach to teaching pretty much centers on meeting the students where they're at. I try and be really responsive to my students and I try to build an awareness of how they're walking in the door and the language that they speak. The way I teach in the classroom has a lot to do, everything to do with what I did before I joined the faculty in 2012. I, I was a reporter, that's all I've ever been. What I intend to do in the classroom with my students is, is uh, share best practices, um, what I've learned, uh, successes and failures. My focus is on creating a classroom where students are learning and practicing the skills of empathy, of um, deliberative engagement, and then um, also um, creative problem solving, all with a focus on helping them develop their skills to be transformational leaders in their communities. I think the way that I try to keep my classroom experience innovative and fresh is knowing my audience, and that's an important idea in journalism, uh, to know and understand who we're talking to. These students aren't going to have the same professional experience that I'm going to have. I change stuff every semester and it'll be little stuff like sometimes it'll be just a couple of things like maybe it's a different reading or a different organizational structure for a couple of moments. Uh, maybe I'll tweak an assignment a little bit uh, but it's also been substantial where I just completely redesigned a class. One that I had taught for four or five semesters and then just thought nope it's not working for me anymore, and if it's not working for me, I don't think it's gonna be working for them as well. Something that I would offer to other people is this concept of plus one thinking when it comes to thinking about course design, designing for access, universal design for learning. And if you're not familiar with it, plus one thinking is the idea that you don't have to overhaul your entire course all in one sitting to make it better. It's the idea that if you make just one small change, that one small change probably has a decent impact on at least one of your students. So I think a lot of times when we put those learning outcomes together, we think about them in terms of, you know, I need to get these down on paper and, and, and then they're sort of, that's that first part of the syllabus and then the rest of the syllabus sort of gets developed. And for me, the sort of aha moment of teaching was, wait a second, those learning outcomes should be driving everything. They should be driving the readings that I'm assigning, the assignments that I'm creating, the way in which my canvas looks, right? Like all of those sorts of things. I think spontaneity in the classroom is really important. I have a lesson plan every day, we all do, but sometimes moods shift and something takes the discussion in a different direction. And that's when a class can become a little bit like an improv performance. And so I try to be aware of and pay attention to what the class is telling me. Accepting the fact that something is going to go wrong. You are going to mess up. It's going to happen. None of us are perfect beings. And so not being so afraid or trying to avoid that mess up has helped me to feel a little bit more free in engaging with my students more authentically or trying something new.